to try to analyze the sequence cosine n pi. We're going to try to find the limit of the sequences as n extends to infinity over the natural numbers. So let's play with this for a moment and see what we can get here. Well, if we plugged in n equals 1, right, for n equals 1, notice we would have cosine of 1 times pi, and the cosine of pi, of course, is negative 1. If we replaced n for 2, then we would have the cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. Then if we did n equals 3, we would get the cosine of 3 pi, which is a complete cycle plus another half turn, which puts us back over at negative 1. n equals 4 would be the cosine of 4 pi, and this would be, again, 1. So what we're seeing here is that this particular sequence is going to be what we say oscillating between 1 and negative 1 and therefore it's never actually going to settle down towards a limit it's going to keep bouncing back and forth so we would say that this limit here DNE or this limit does not exist but how would we show this formally and by formally I mean by an epsilon n type argument right so let's try to do this let's go over to this next slide and we're going to try to prove this formally using the definition of a sequence converging by the epsilon n definition okay so we're going to make a claim that the limit of cosine of n pi does not exist okay cosine of n pi does not exist well okay so what does that mean well for a limit to exist means it's a universally quantified statement over all epsilon. So I'm going to start off this argument by just choosing an epsilon that I know is going to work. Because since we're going to prove that it does not exist, we're going to be doing the negation of the epsilon n uh, statement. So let epsilon equal to 1. So this is definitely a number, right? So this is going to be our one epsilon that we're going to work with. And we're going to show that this one epsilon violates the definition of this sequence converging towards something. Okay, we're going to suppose that the limit of cosine n pi does exist. And we're going to say that it's equal to a. Okay, so we're going to have it equal to a particular number. So now, what does that mean? By the definition of a limit, if this limit did exist, there must, therefore, be an n such that for all n bigger than n, we have cosine of n pi minus a is going to be able to be made less than epsilon, where epsilon in our case, since we're letting epsilon equal 1, must be able to be made less than 1. Okay, now as we noticed from the previous slide, cosine of n pi oscillates between 1 and negative 1, depending upon whether n were odd or n were even. So if we fix the capital N, there's of course even and odd numbers beyond that capital N. So notice that for notice for an let's see an odd n bigger than n this means that we would have cosine of an odd number times pi and that therefore would be a negative one so we'd have the absolute value of negative one minus a would be less than 1 and for an even n bigger than capital N we would have that the cosine of an even number times pi would be a positive one so we'd have a 1 minus a which would be less than 1 Right, so both of those have to hold. We'd have to have negative 1 minus a being less than 1, and also at the same time 1 minus a being less than 1. So let me underline those or box them so we can pay close attention to those two facts, because I'll use them later. And now I'm going to try to get a contradiction out of this. Okay, so let's start off and say, now notice, let's take a number that we know and love like 2. Right, so consider the number 2. What is 2 equal to? Well, 2 is equal to, of course, 
absolute value of 1 minus negative 1. Right? Agreed? Then this is the same as absolute value of 1 minus a, so I'm subtracting an a, then I'm going to add an a, and then I'm going to minus the negative 1. So in other words, I subtracted a and I added a, so I didn't change anything. By the triangle inequality, we would now get the absolute value of 1 minus a right here. And then on this other side, we would have an absolute value of a minus negative 1. Right? A minus negative 1. A minus negative 1. Okay. So now let's look at what this is really saying. Okay, now what's neat is that we have that the first one is 1 minus a, and from the green box we know that that's less than the number 1, and then on the other hand, a minus negative 1 is equivalent to a plus 1, which is equivalent to this expression, so that side is also less than 1. Right, so we have that we have 1 plus 1 here, and that is of course equal to 2. And so what we ended up showing was that 2 is less than 2. And that, of course, is a contradiction. So the existence of that limit causes a contradiction. It causes 2 to be less than 2. And therefore, we get to conclude that the limit does not exist, and that completes the proof.